Good morning, my friends. It's Friday, October 1st, and I'm here with you at the Rising of the Sun. My cat has already gone out. She was very excited to head out this morning after staying with me last night. And I have this beautiful icon to help me pray. We're almost at St. Francis Day. Birds are flocking to him. And he blesses them and talks to them. We continue today in the second book of Kings with the arrival of one of the greatest prophets, one of the major prophets in the Old Testament. King Hezekiah has heard through his messengers that Ram Laka, the messenger of Sennacherib, the king of Assyria, has told him that they might as well give up hope that they're going to take over. Assyria is going to take over the land of Judah and destroy Yahweh. So Hezekiah is absolutely distraught. He tears his clothes, he weeps, and he sends his messengers to the prophet Isaiah. And the great Isaiah says, don't give up hope. The king of Assyria will fall in battle and you can trust in God. Hezekiah hears this news and he goes back into the temple to the altar. He's gotten now a message from Ramlaka saying that Sennacherib is doing great so far. He's battling, but he's not dead. And that he has wiped out all other gods of all other lands. And there's no way he's not going to wipe out Hezekiah and his God and the land of Judah. And Hezekiah prays. He begs God saying, please deliver us. I know that these false gods have been wiped out, but don't let us be wiped out. Don't you be wiped out in this land. So there's this sense that God and the people are one. So if you wipe out a people, you wipe out their God, you discredit their God. And if you cannot wipe them out or they defeat you, then their God wins. It's as if there's a, a battle going on in the cosmic realm that parallels the battle on the earthly realm. And it's all about wiping out your neighbor. <laughs> But Isaiah, into the midst of all this despair and violence, brings a voice of hope. Basically, he says, don't give up. Hezekiah says, my people are so exhausted that women cannot sit on the birthing stool and push their babies out because they're too tired. I tell you, I love these Hebrews. They have the most vivid imagery. <laughs> and Isaiah says, I know you're tired, but God is good. And just keep, keep on holding on to hope. Sometimes that's what life boils down to, doesn't it? Holding on to that last thread that this all is good and that all will be well in the end. And just trusting in that, that's what faith is. Just trusting in the goodness of God and in the greater plan that we cannot see. And just hoping and praying and holding fast, steadfast love. Steadfast love, hesed, they call it. So... Hezekiah holds fast, and the prophet helps him, and the prophet gives him faith. And let's let Isaiah give us faith, too, as we continue to battle this coronavirus. Hold on there. Don't give up hope for anything, because in God, all things are possible. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the prophet Isaiah and for all these prophets and all the people in our life that give us hope, that edify us, that give us strength. Help us to listen to them and not to the voices of criticism, self-hatred, or darkness. Give us work to do today, Lord, whatever it is that you call us to do, our next steps in doing good work. Help us to be kind, gracious, to serve justice and compassion. We ask you to bless the peoples of this earth, Lord, as we battle this coronavirus. We ask you to bless all nations and bring them peace. We ask you to comfort and provide for all refugees, prisoners, 
those who are lost, those who suffer from mental health issues, those who suffer from despair, grief, or just weariness. Bring them hope as you brought hope to Hezekiah from Isaiah. Bring us all hope in this day, Lord, and give us strength to continue on with tenacity and resilience and serve you all the days of our life, no matter what the circumstances. This we pray in the name of Jesus, your son. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day.